Hello, my name is David Keck, and on October 23rd of 2014, I was a victim of a hate crime. Some friends had called me and wanted to go to our favorite place. It's kind of like our Cheers. It's a karaoke bar. And I decided to join them. I walked in, and I guess a stranger saw me, and he didn't like me. He didn't like the way I talked. He didn't like the way I walked, the way I dressed. Maybe he didn't like the songs I sang. But somehow a complete stranger could watch me and actually go out of his way to talk to me while the whole time he's planning my death. I was at the table with my friends and I excused myself to the restroom. That's when my attacker came up and started talking to me. He showed interest in something I was wearing um, that I had actually designed. So I gave him a business card and continued to the bathroom alone. After leaving the bathroom, I joined my friends. We finished our drinks, paid our tab, and we left together. Surveillance cameras show all of this, and it also shows uh, my attacker leaving three minutes later. There are no cameras outside the door, so there's no footage of what happened from there. My friends do state that they seen me drive out of the parking lot by myself. The next thing I remember, I woke up in the hospital. I couldn't even open my eyes. Everything hurt. Several years ago, um, I was in a horrible car accident that actually killed three people in my family. My brother and I barely survived this car accident. My mother and my grandmother stated that when I woke up at the hospital after my attack, I was asking for my brother, afraid that he was hurt. I thought we were in that car accident. I was reliving those moments. Little did I know, I was a victim of another tragedy. A girlfriend came to see me and she sat by the bed and she said that I just kept saying over and over that I was only trying to help him. So there came a point that the nurses had to ask everyone to leave the room. I was going to have to have a rape test. Would you believe the nurses didn't fully seal the door? And another friend walked in, seeing me fully exposed, going through the rape test. Because of him, because of a stranger, I keep getting violated. I keep getting embarrassed. I keep getting questions asked I don't know the answers to. I have to be told that someone, as well as foreign objects, have been inside me. My story, which was written based off of the rapist's confession, was now being told on the news. The news anchor stated that I came on to my attacker sexually, and that is what led him to beat me. I couldn't believe how much of the story was wrong, but because it was on the news, the public believed it. They blamed me. I was told I should be the one going to jail simply because I went to a straight bar. I started receiving death threats. People were saying they wanted to finish the job. I was accused of doing drugs, even though there was a drug test done in the ER and it came back negative. I started to blame myself. Maybe they were right. Maybe I deserved everything that was happening to me. I received a call from the girlfriend of my attacker. She told me, that he actually used my phone standing over my body and called her, confessing to what he had done. She said he told her how I was flopping like a fish out of water and he stood over me talking on the phone, on my phone, until he thought I was dead. Months after staying with my family and attempting to recover, um, I decided I wanted to go back to my apartment. I wanted to live alone. I wanted to try to find me again. I walked in and there was blood everywhere. My handprints streaked up down the hall where he dragged me from room to room. Blood was splattered on the cabinets and the walls where he was kicking and stomping my head. I cleaned up the blood the best I could. I then went and hid knives under every couch cushion, every drawer, beside every door. 
I then went into my bedroom. I wanted to lay down. There was blood on every blanket and pillow on my bed. The blood had soaked through the blankets, through the mattress. I had no choice but to lay down and sleep in the aftermath of my rape so I can wake up tomorrow and face another day of discrimination. His story gets told on the news and it's blaming me. He can walk without a walker and I can't. He knows every detail of what happened to me and I don't. I get to deal with his actions daily. I get blamed for being raped and being victimized. And I get to live with his fingerprints all over me and all over my home. Someone asked me what I would want to happen to him. Someone asked me if I would want him dead. And honestly, no, I don't want him physically dead. I just want him to feel like me. I want him to feel dead like me. My name is David Keck, and I am the host of Surviving Abuse Podcast, and this is my story.